So the match finally begins. They do a few hardcore things, and Cody grabs a table, but Roman cuts him off and pushes the table back, and everyone boos. And for about oh, five minutes, maybe a little more, it was a Roman Reigns title defense. Hit a move, stand there, badmouth him. I'll send you to Hollywood with the rest of them. This is my company, you little bitch. At which point McAfee responds, still out of his mind, Our tribal chief talking that shit! <laughs> <laughs> what was that moment where Michael Cole wouldn't say a bad word and then and then uh... it was I, I think it was when Damian Priest came out. But, yes, it was it was uh, Damian Priest cashing in. That's right. Da- Priest is celebrating. Punk is sitting and cackling and clapping, and Cole says, "Holy sh!" And he stops, and there's a long long pause, yeah. and then McAfee just goes, "Shit, shit!" <laughs> right into the mic. I howled. <laughs> what is this guy doing? He's, he's well, he's hanging out with. Steve. I think we all know. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, the other great moment was when they're going back and forth. Roman, oh, he also, he, he, he <laughs> accused, Ro- first, first, first he lays Cody out and says something about a multi-million dollar bonus and laughs. That made me laugh. Then he hits, he hits Cody with a crossroads, makes a cover, Cody kicks out, Roman is dejected, he turns to Paul Heyman and says, that move sucks! <laughs> that move don't mean nobody! I will hear no... Negativity towards Roman Reigns. He is fucking great. And he was awesome in this match. So they do some back and forth, and there's a nut shot and a Superman punch, and uh, Cody hits the crossroads. <laughs> He's going to go for another one, but Jimmy Uso arrives to super kick him in the face. And at that moment, that's when it felt like the match has actually begun. Because the whole point of this was there's going to be lots of interference. So. Yeah, but you know what was great? I think all the fans also knew that. But that did not stop them from getting into the first part of the match. Like in the old days, they would do something where you knew somebody was going to run in, and the people would just be dead quiet because they knew nothing was going to happen until the guy ran in. But they were like totally into this match, even though they knew 80 million people were about to run in. So we have uh, Jimmy's out there. Jay runs out to fight with Jimmy. Thank God they had a better night than they did the night before. Uh, Jay tackles Jimmy off the stage, maybe through a table. We're not quite sure. Well, there were two tables there. I think they only went through one. But the 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 point is, they fell a long way, and I hope they're okay. It was not just you know you fall three feet off the stage through two tables. I mean, they fell and fell and fell and then crashed through these tables. I was like, holy shit, that was scary. So next is Solo Sokoa. He runs out there. He spikes Cody. Cody still kicks out. Same finish from last year. That yes, was the finish. Yeah, yeah. Solo thumbed Cody as he was going for the crossroads, and then Roman speared him and pinned him. This time, Roman speared him and didn't pin him. Cody kicked out. So Solo, can't believe somebody kicked out of his spike, screams at Roman, finish him! And Roman screams back, I know! <laughs> they hit a spear and spike combo. That also gets to... Before they have a chance to do anything else, out runs John Cena. You know what? This was great because they hit the music. I'm not sure people thought that John Cena would be there. I think probably many people figured that he would, but they hit his music and they went fucking nuts. And this guy ran to the ring, and uh, God bless John Cena. Still looks great, but that guy ain't a runner. And he was suffering running down that long ass uh, ramp. At his peak, agility was never a strong suit. No. no. And he flies into the ring and he beats up solo. And uh, he gave him an AA through a table. And this was great because, you know, they did that John Cena solo match. And remember, Solo just destroyed him. I, I, Absolutely destroyed him. Yeah. To the point where you thought this may be the end of Rock's career, or uh, John Cena's career. And, you know, John Cena had hinted that he was going to be back. And people were like, you know, man, that was a one-sided. You know, what's John Cena? Well, here's the answer. John Cena showed up and got his revenge on Solo in the main event of WrestleMania. And the place loved it. So, yeah, I had forgotten that whole Cena solo thing. Michael Cole, who had a great night, reminded us of that. So Cena is satisfied. He has gotten his vengeance here on the Solo Sokoa fella when The Rock's music hits. And suddenly, Cena is both surprised and very, very disappointed. <laughs> you know what's great about The Rock is like, we were talking about Chris Jericho and how he, he always has some way to reinvent his character or whatever. Yeah. This final boss, who does nothing but fucking swear, is like... Rock is coming down this ramp, and like the camera's just watching him, him walk down the ramp, and he's like, 
God damn motherfucker, what's this fucking mother? And he's just like the whole way down and they're trying to bleep everything. And like the whole time, he's just swearing his head off this whole time. This this crazed madman final boss rock. Love this character. He storms out. He is bleeped more than a two months worth of NXT crowds. And they have a stare down. It's Black Adam versus Peacemaker. And the fight goes exactly like a Black Adam Peacemaker fight would go. Rock destroys him. Yeah, Cena tries one swing and yeah. Rock just grabs him and gives him the rock bottom. Cena ever knows how unselfish Cena is. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is not my fight. It's okay. And even though I just killed a guy, this guy can kill me. Then the shield music hits. Yes. And I thought, oh my god. Did they get did they did they get loan Dean Ambrose back for one night? You could have asked me. Well, I think they actually had people believing it was possible. Sure. But, brother, you ain't getting John Moxley no. if they're not going to even let Dustin sit in the front row, row with uh, with Cody's family. Yes. It is family. So it is, of course, Seth Rollins. This poor dork. Who had a terrible, terrible weekend. Now, let's review. He makes the trip to SmackDown where his championship defense is not mentioned even one time. He main events night one where he and his partner get their asses beat. And are screwed. He opens night two, where he gets his ass beat and loses the title. He returns for the main event of night two with a weapon. He yeah. was armed. Yes. And he gets in this ring to attack the rock. But Roman sees him coming, spears him to death. Seth Rollins. It was a Superman punch. Uh, regardless. Yes. Seth Rollins, I'm afraid, your geek of the week. Do you remember when uh, he came out at the beginning of the show and CM Punk said, look at this goof? Yes. You know, <laughs> I mean, I like him as a guy. I like him as a wrestler. He has the worst character in this business. Actually, he doesn't. Uh, that'd be uh, Tatum Paxley <laughs> and uh, Joe Gacy. So he's third. Okay. But man, I felt bad for the guy here. <laughs> I was like, you... We're a fucking geek here. He just got laid out. He's doing this the shield gimmick. He's doing the callback. And he just gets fucking laid out. So Rock gets his strap. And he's about to strap the hell out of this nerd in a flak jacket. And the dong hit. I wish I was there when Granny heard the dong hit. Oh, my Lord. It's the Undertaker. The lights go out. They come back. Taker's in the ring. Rock is scurred. Taker hits a big ass choke slam. Lights go out. Taker vanishes. So now, actually, everybody vanished. That's true. Everybody disappeared, with the exception of Roman Cody, Reigns, Roman, and Seth. Yeah, Seth Rollins is still in the ring, and Roman grabs that chair and he's eyeballing Cody. But he turns, because this guy has been carrying a grudge for a decade, of when Seth Rollins broke up the shield by hitting him in the back with a chair. And he finally gets his payback after beating his ass dozens of times in between. He lays out Seth with his chair. But you know what, Vinny? Mm -hmm. I know people hate the term cinema, and I won't use it. But if you were going to use cinema for anything, mm -hmm. Roman Reigns had this multi-year reign. And when those lights came back on, there was a weight belt in the ring, and there was a chair in the ring, and Cody Rhodes was down. All he had to do was get that chair and beat the shit out of Cody, and he would have won. Yep. But instead, he picked up that chair, and he saw that silly goof, mm -hmm. and he saw that flak jacket, and he remembered when this idiot turned on him 10 fucking years ago, and he could not help himself yeah. but give this nerd a beating. Long-term storytelling. And that led directly... <clears throat> yes. To him getting booted in the face, three crossroads, and pinned. It was his own fucking fault. Hoisted it, by his own petard. Exactly. But it wasn't like Seth, you know, helped Cody win. Seth was That's merely, for sure. He was just a body. Seth was, in fact, He useless. did not help Cody one bit. Yes. And, uh, you know, Roman tried the spear, got booted. Cody had three of his crossroads yes. and pinned him. It was operatic in scope. Yes. And Cody gets this win. And we have not mentioned Samantha Irvin tonight. She, she she had a great night, too. 
But you can hear it in her voice. And uh, your own website, Brian, has retweeted the video. She is choking back tears. Yes. As she makes the announcement, her voice warbling. Warbling, I say. As she announces, here is your winner and the new Universal Champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. And Cody is crying, and Brandy is crying, and Michael Cole is giving a speech about how he knew Cody since he was a little boy, always knew he had star power. He left here sad and heartbroken to create his own story, came back a superstar, did something his father, one of the greatest of all time, could ever... He's crying as he's telling the story. Punk gets in the ring to uh, raise his hand. He's not crying. And uh, then Cody did as he promised, and he handed the title to his mother because he could not hand it to his father and so then cody starts cutting this promo and he says i know it's been a long night long weekend i just want to say one thing there are two people i would not be here right now for we're not the for these two people i want them to come out right now one of them he said is bruce pritchard and you could just hear the crowd the crowd was like we like you cody <laughs> We don't want to turn on you, <laughs> but we are not cheering for Bruce. I mean, it was like silence when he called out Bruce Pritchard. And then he said, the other guy is somebody who is kicking and screaming and fighting to avoid doing this. But it is a new era. And I demand Triple H come down to the ring. And, uh, you know, comes uh, Bruce and he hugs Cody and there's no reaction whatsoever. They do not want to cheer him. And then uh, out comes Triple H and they do cheer him. And he comes down the ramp looking like he's pissed. Like, God damn it, we went over this, motherfucker. I don't want to come out. But, man, he got in the ring, and he's trying so hard not to cry. He's beat red. He hugs Cody and, like, fought, just fighting to hold back tears. And then Randy and Sammy put Cody on their shoulders. Cody hugs Cole. He shakes hands with McAfee and Corey. He's hugging cameramen. He's he's hugging, like, these blokes that put the lights up and down. I mean, and then he runs into uh, Nick Khan, and there's someone next to Nick Khan. I don't know who it is, but, like, Nick puts out his hand to shake Cody. Cody goes to the person next to him. Poor Nick has to stand there all weird. And then he shakes Nick's hand, and then, I mean, this is great. Absolutely great. They made this look like the coronation of the next Hulk Hogan, I'm trying to remember. Bruno. I'm trying to remember the last time in WWE the locker room emptied to, emptied to celebrate a new champion. It may have been Hulk Hogan with Andre pouring champagne on. I feel like it's been done at some point. It, Angle it, maybe or something. Angle was one. Yeah. Oh, the, I think it was his family. Yeah. I don't know if the, the locker room emptied like that. Which, which by the way, a classic Dusty Rhodes trope. Yeah. So, as as much as I love the match, the match is a million zillion stars. Uh, the post match was even better and. And like an even bigger sign that things have changed here because we don't, you haven't seen, well, I haven't seen a babyface win at Mania in forever, but uh, when they do, they're usually out there alone. And here's the locker room as a united front, happy and proud of this guy for what he's done. His family is out there, a bunch of people you don't know, random children, negative one, and Cody does his bit and is the, the, the most babyface as babyface ever saw. Hugging every employee of the thousands that work for this company. And uh, everyone loved him, and he loved everyone. And that was a win. And the show ended, and you've never been happier at the end of a WWE show. Yeah. I will never forget that uh, WrestleMania when Shawn Michaels retired. And, you know, that wasn't something where they were out to screw you. It was just like he was done, and he wanted to do the match, and, you know, he was obviously going to lose and everything like that. But I remember that show ended... And I just remember sitting there and like the crowd was just silent. And we all just stood up and we quietly left. <laughs> and like there's tens of thousands of people walking through the halls of I forget what building it was, all heading to their cars or whatever. And they're just quiet and they're just sad. And like, you know, to them, that was the end of an era. You know, Shawn Michaels, for a lot of them, that was like the greatest wrestler who ever lived. And they sat there and they watched him retire and they knew they were never going to see him wrestle again until a horrible match in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and uh, and this was the opposite. It was like, I think for a lot of fans, and, you know, say what you will about, about WWE and, you know, there's probably still people that need to go, but there's also a lot of really good people there and they do want this to be a new era. And fans obviously want this to be a new era. No fan is sitting there going, I long for the old days. 
when we had a bunch of assholes in charge and motherfuckers. No, everybody wants it to be a new era. Mm -hmm. And and that's what this show was about, trying to tell you that, you know, that's what we're really trying to do here is we are trying to make this a new era and put the past behind us. So hopefully they can. That's all we can hope for is that they can. Now, Eddie, we've taken a lot of time, and this is supposed to be your show. So uh, what did you think of this main event and uh, and everything surrounding it? It was emotional. I actually cried at the end, but a uh, grown man cried. But uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, Cody's entrance was actually Triple H's entrance from 10 years ago. The mask, Stephanie McMahon grabbing the mask. It was How symbolic. about that? I hadn't thought of that. I was, I was trying to figure out what skeleton toy group that mask reminded me of. And I, can't, I still can't figure it out. There was a toy I had when I was a kid that looked very much like Cody's mask tonight. Yep, it was very symbolic. Uh, like we mentioned about the Young Bucks, they got their WrestleMania moment, but uh, they mentioned Daniel Bryan, they mentioned Ed, they showed Chris Jericho, Kenny Omega. It definitely feels like a new WWE, even though with this whole drama this week with AEW and WWE back and forth. But uh, great match. It felt like Attitude Era. They were uh, Cody used a spear, Roman used a crossroads. It was like 2000 again when everybody was using each other's finishers. Uh, it was pretty pretty awesome, and then uh, obviously when I was taking left, uh, if you haven't noticed, or you probably will replay it back. You can actually see a star from the middle of the ring go all the way up to the sky. So it wasn't like dark. Somebody left. It felt like he went into the stars, and then that's it. Like you know, wow, dusty roads and everything. So if you didn't catch that, you can watch it again. But definitely don't miss Kevin Dunn uh, at all. No, but fuck that's something guy. I caught. Uh, it was just a pretty awesome moment. Uh, Cody Rhodes is a company man, shook everybody's hand. It was just, it felt, obviously it feels like a new era because if you no notice tonight, every baby face or every good feeling person won, except obviously Logan Paul, but probably they're trying to give him his main event in Cleveland, probably against John Cena or somebody else. But literally everybody that you expected to win, even when Priest cashed in, people was into that because they saw a, uh, Oh my God! Moment in the beginning of the match, they got every fan. It was like a fan service. This was it. That's why I feel like this is one of the top WrestleMania main events or matches or a show of all time because it was fan service. And when Vince was here, we definitely didn't get that, as you saw from last year. Main event night one last year, people stood until the end, and then night two, people got the hell out of there in Los Angeles. And tonight, I feel like. Probably people still in the stadium right now, waiting for Cody Rhodes to leave the stadium, but it was pretty awesome. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.